Yes, yes, guys. My name is Aronin. Welcome to the Martial Arts Podcast, episode three. Um, we've got a lot to talk about today in terms of UFC, MMA, boxing, and MMA and media, which is very, very interesting. But I will let my co-hosts introduce themselves. Yeah, bro. Devante, same again. Luke, you know how we do. We're here. Getting busy, bro. Love that, man. Love that. So, obviously, guys, uh, it was UFC fight night yesterday. I think the, the main event was um, Corey Sandhagen and yeah. Rob, Rob Font. Yeah. And that was a good technical match. But the crowd was happy about that. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. But it was it was pretty, pretty cool. What do you guys think about the main event um, of it and what it means for the Panther division going forward? I think it was uh, a great display of jiu-jitsu and grappling. Um, it's not the most spectator-friendly thing because it takes a bit of like intelligence to understand what's going yeah, on in yeah, those positions nice. and nice. to really appreciate how hard it is to escape certain <laughs> positions. If you're not a grappler, you can't really relate. Yeah. Fair. But um, I feel like he was preparing for um, Umar and Amar Gamedov. He got injured and he just executed probably the same game plan yeah. on, on a great striker. But he did well. Mm. I think... I think we got to respect what Sanhagen has to do in it. Like he hasn't got a fluid, has a, hasn't, hasn't had a fluid run in the division. Mm. So sometimes you just got to grind them out and win the matches, my bro. So I mean, it's fine and dandy when you do that same grinding out and you're 32 and 0. It looks <laughs> yeah. really good in it. I mean like best person in MMA is mauling people. We know, mashallah, we talk about Habib and then things like that. Facts. But it, people don't, it doesn't register for people when they think, oh, we thought you could have done this and you didn't do that and you did, didn't do that and you could have done that. But the front's got hands, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't ramp before like that, Sandy. Like, he's tough as well. Like, so you have, if you have to take him down, you take him down, bro. And yeah. apparently, he uh, he had um, um, injured his tricep in the first round. Who? Sandhagen. Is it? Makes sense. He played a smart game, you know. Yeah. Mm. So it went, it went too crazy. But what we were talking about, though, I can't lie to you. Diego Lopez. Bad boy, isn't it? Yeah, sick. Bad brother. Bad. His jiu-jitsu, yeah. Oh, my days. His jiu-jitsu, bro. High level. Jumping, uh, for, say, jumping flying arbor, triangle. Yeah. Just went from place to place. It was just so fluid and controlled and tight, particularly for Nogi, bro. That's kind of, I know they're dry, but mm. that's kind of rare. Some, that's more like a gi thing you see more than that because that level of control. So that and was it, pretty crazy. It's such a high, um, what's the word? It's such a high probability that you miss that technique. Yeah. And also, the criticism you get if you miss that technique. If you oh. jump up to do that and you miss it and the person passes your guard, we're never at the end of it, bro. So I mean, but he's been like that since Lux Fight, bro. Yeah. yeah. So Lux Fight, like, he, like, he's been like that. Like, I can't remember how I got into watching him. And I was thinking, right, this guy's really running the show. Him, like I said, his teammate, Acosta. And they just got very, very applicable jujitsu. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's nice. I think people make the mistake of thinking, okay, so and so's a jiu-jitsu world champion, so and so's this. And what all of that is valid, yeah. But sometimes there's a little bit of an X factor that someone's got in MMA where they where they know they're very concise with the submissions, they Thanks. know when to pull, they've got that confidence and that lack of fear. And I just think he's got it, bro. I just think I, I genuinely, I definitely think he can be champion in the division. And he knows that to be champion. He's already done his losses. He's done he's got six losses on his record. It's not like no, someone's just won and come from a lower league and they haven't lost a match. Yeah. When you have that bounce back ability, do you know what I mean? Like it, it kind of helps you in your in your in your in your career. Like, do you know what I mean? Like I remember um it's not the same obviously it's jujitsu. Remember being at Blue Belt and I didn't get tapped for a year in the gym. A whole year? A whole year, my brother. Not a, a year. And it's not a good thing. It wasn't a good thing. If I rolled my coach, I got tapped. That was it. Of course. Yeah. But I didn't get tapped. But the gym was a new gym in it, so I was one of the, it was like the highest level was blue belts. Okay. And I was one of the better blue belts. Yeah. Um, competitively, and I used to mm. compete regular at blue belt. And I remember thinking to myself, "All right, this is good." But getting that monkey off my back of somebody subbing me, even in the gym, it was such a n nicer feeling that to be able to roll freely and not have that on my back. Do you know what I mean? Like, facts. It's, it's so sometimes I feel like. The, the not losing puts a lot of pressure on yourself. So I mean, to not be able to express yourself and work effectively. And also, it's trial and error. Some 100%. things don't work, you rule them out your game. Some things do work, you keep them in your game. Do you know what I mean? Where are you going to find out if you don't find out in the gym? Where are you going to find out? MMA's cutthroat, isn't it? You, you want to be able to find it out before you get to the organisation where if you get cut, getting back in is 
a political thing. Yeah. So he's found out. He's had that. You know what I mean? He had that pretty good level where he was at Lux and it was decent, man. Loved him, man. That double gonna lie to you. When I saw him get that that uh, armbar tire, I need to break his arm. I thought Whoa. it was broken. Is it, you see, it went, it went then the guy <laughs> carried on, and then it went, and then he let go, and it's mad because I think he, I don't think he, I don't think the guy tapped when he let go. He tapped the first, he tapped, they rolled over, and he let go, and the referee didn't, nobody argued. The opponent didn't argue. So I think he might have verbally tapped, but the opponent didn't argue. The referee didn't argue. They knew, bro, you have got, you can't tap. It's happened, didn't it? His arm. That's what, for what I saw. Um, when he was setting up the triangle, he had his arm on the inside. He was trying to worm it in. Yeah. And I was thinking it's, it's going to be hard for him to tap. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because everything's trapped up and balanced as well. That's yeah. the thing. When you sweep someone from that position, if the submission is getting done in the transition, they can't tap because your instinct is to put your hand on the mat. Mm. Your instinct is not to is not to put your hand. You have to choose. I'm either going to definitely get tapped, um, subbed if I stick my hand up to tap, or I can run the risk of going over and not tap. But I'm already in the process of. Everything getting broken. Yeah, that's yeah. mad. It's it's, it's it's a it's a difficult thing, man. It was lovely to watch. Though. It was a nice, it's beautiful. I was excited. Beautiful. I was excited. I, I, I was like, oh my god. Yeah. So yeah, I was I was I was happy with that. Who do you think has the best jujitsu in the uh, UFC at the moment? At the moment, yeah. I don't care what nobody says. Um, um, Ortega. Don't care what nobody says. Brian Ortega. Ortega has the. He is TC. He is like. Yeah, for me. Best gestures in, in, in MMA for me personally. What about you? I'd have to think about it, man. Um, it's, I think you can break it down in different ways. I think the best submission game in the UFC is the Bronx. Highest level submissions get threat from everywhere, threat from the bottom, threat from the top. Like he's done it at that level for years, he's been consistent with it. But submissions isn't all of Jiu Jitsu. So I had a black belt that I know who I used to train with. He said to me, I want to say, so people got the best jiu-jitsu in the UFC. I said, what? He said, yeah. He said, if you break it down into what he's actually doing, the art that he's displaying is jiu-jitsu and using it in an MMA setting. He might not be graded at this belt or that belt, but it was good. He had very good jiu-jitsu control. Do you know what I mean? You don't take, you don't put hooks in, in wrestling. He's got hooks in. He's getting hooks against the fence, cage walking, cage working. So I think it's a bit, it's a little bit difficult to call one. Who would you say? A bit controversial, but um, Bryce Mitchell, I think he's got brilliant jiu-jitsu. I know he's on a bit of a skid at the moment, but I watched a fight with him. Um, I can't remember who his opponent was, but I think they were a black belt, and he had like several twister attempts, <clears throat> sick yeah. control, sick transitions. Or he jiu-jitsu. No, he's got, he, has, he has got good jiu-jitsu. He has. But I think, that's what I mean. I think the application of it, and the ability to perform or get it or allow it to make you win a fight, mm. I think is one of the main things to judge it on because I agree, but I don't know. I agree he's up there, but there's a few fighters that would fall into a similar category. So there is, um, oh, I have to remember his name. I'll try and come back to it. Um, there's a few lightweights that are not necessarily ranked, but their jujitsu is solid in that way. Um, you look at um, Gilbert Burns. Oh, phenomenal jiu-jitsu. You see what I mean? And he actually applies it. It's just because he's got heavy hands at the moment. He's been heavy-handed for a, <laughs> a couple of years. Man, them see him lick, like knock man out. But he's got the he's got the very good control of jiu-jitsu. Was it Brown Belt? He won the worlds. I think it was. Yeah, yeah he won the, the Chip Brown, champion. Yeah. Yeah, he's very yeah. good. He's very good. Even his brother was. He's got a very good nogi game. Herbert Burns. I'm not sure if he's still there because I know he got injured badly. But he had a he had a bit of a he could do his job as well, man. So there's a few, there's a few, man. But submissions, if we're dealing with submissions, like I don't think there's an argument about Charles de Bronx for. I think he holds the record for the most subs. Most subs. You know what what mean? about um? This is this two you got in mind as well, John Jones and Tom Aspinall. Ooh. All right, Aspinall. Do you know what? That's a solid shout. Aspinall is a super shout. I'm not even lying to you. That there, it's not a nice guy to roll with, bro. I'm not gonna. You see that guy? Or I feel sorry for anybody in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a grappling exchange room. Even John Jones? Yeah. Oh, Even man. John Jones? Yep. 100%. I have zero Aspinall. I'm, honestly, I can't imagine John Jones dominating Aspinall offensively with grappling. I can see him avoiding 
getting dominated by Aspinall and winning a fight with the stomps, the kicks, the elbow, all the other creative, beautiful things that he's good at. But I don't feel like he'll have the same joy in grappling as that. You've got to remember as well, he, he grappled with Vitor. And Vitor, did it, was, he didn't make it easy. Vitor didn't make it easy for him. John Jones was about 22, 23 then, man. Which is fair. And Vitor was about 172 then. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it works both ways. I get what you're saying, but it works both ways. Yeah. I feel like John Jones' fight IQ across the board is very unmatchable. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. very, it's hard to, hard to match, yeah? But Aspinall puts the work in, bro. He's got, is there something about the way he fights, yeah? Especially for someone so big. It's just, it, it, I'm like, he does it, man. He does it, man. There was, it was quite similar to, um, what do you call it? When I say him fought, or when he fought, um, <laughs> Volkov, had that nasty, mounted armbar on him. Yeah. Uh, that was scary. Because that wasn't, and Volkov isn't any old, you know, walk in the park. Yeah. Um, um, okay, he's he's coming to hurt you. He's coming to, to, to and for him to do that to a guy who's bigger than him, longer, get inside, get the range, and just dominate like that. Yeah, that was a scary place to kind of see, to see that, that matchup. One hundred percent. That's what's kind of curious when you fought Curtis Blades. That's what. That's what. Why it's more disappointed about yeah. the injury because that fight was going to say so much about where he is in terms of not just grappling, but obviously overall where yeah. he's in in the division. So. See, that's a bit what I mean. So, I'm not saying Blades and Jones are the same level, especially not, not fight IQ, that's not even doubtable. Yeah. But the ability to grapple, Blades has probably the most similar ability to grapple and punish you, elbows, whatever, yeah. when he gets you to the mat as Jones. Yeah. He just doesn't have the same IQ as Jones. But ability wise, if we, I, I look more at, okay, cool, the ability of Aspinall is just different level, bro. There's some really good fighters. Aspinall's from Liverpool, isn't it? Something like Manchester, something like, yeah, something like that. And I think, yeah. if I've got it right, I'm not even going to quote it because it's on camera. But some of the, some really good grapplers have come out from the area. Does that mean you've got Grundy, you've got, um, I don't know if you don't remember Paul Sass. Do you remember Paul Sass? Bro, you want to talk about triangles in MMA? Mm. Watch Paul Sass, bro. Watch Paul, you see man like that? Whew. Sass was on, on smoke. Um, you had... Yeah, but yeah, there's some grapplers, bro. There's some decent. There's some 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 very very good grapplers. Very good grapplers, man. It's true. I mean, man. Even it's not necessarily jujitsu or purist jujitsu, but people don't realize. Yeah, you see, um, Muhammad Mokayev. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I used to watch the brother compete at Tough Grappling Challenge. Not a tough. Um. Oh my gosh. BJJ twenty four seven and All Stars. Yeah. yeah. And bro. The things he used to do as a kid in the gi, bro, it was different, bro. I remember watching the man go compete, do MMA matches, and then looking on his Facebook, I'm seeing a man's gone to school prom and them. Like, he was a you doing these things. He can, he, he's, he's handy. Oh, very good jiu-jitsu in, in MMA. Rayoni Barcelos. Yeah? Who? Rayoni Barcelos, yeah? But he's a bantamweight. What, bruv? Different, different, different. Not even from any of that there. No, he's, 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 his dad coaches him. He's from Novao Unyao originally. And his dad, I think he's a Luta Libre black belt and a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. And he's got very handy grapple. He's a, he can grapple still. There's, there's some grapplers in there. There's some grapplers in there, man. It's mad. There's actually some grapplers. You see, it's, it's, actually, it's actually beautiful to watch the grappling art yeah, and yeah. arts in the UFC. And the combination of them all, I think the reason why we're probably most inclined to call it jujitsu is because on the whole, as an as a grappling art, jujitsu allows you to do the majority of things. So there's not much you can do. There's nothing in wrestling that is you that you can't do in jujitsu. But there's stuff in, in in wrestling in in a wrestling match that you, some jujitsu moves you can't do in a wrestling match. Correct. Yeah, so the yeah. best expression of grappling would be let's have a jujitsu match or a no gi match, and see where everyone fears. Do you know what I mean by that? So we call it jujitsu, probably because it fulfills all of the criteria of jujitsu. Whereas we couldn't necessarily call it wrestling if someone's gonna guillotine someone, can we? Because they're, ne they're not gonna go for that, that submission. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I think the only level above jujitsu in relation to combat is calling it MMA in it. Do you know what I mean? Like it's strikes. So you can only add strikes to jujitsu, which adds to it. Everything else is in it. 
Facts. wrestling's in it. You wrestle. It's a form of wrestling. This is a form of wrestling. Oh, for sure. So it's, there's not really much. So wait, where, where would you rate um, Diaz? Where would you rate his his um, grappling in MMA? I feel sorry for Diaz, man. From from from, from what to do about God? He's grappling. Just as a fighter in general, man. Which one? Both. Um, Mainly Nate. Nate. I feel like um, well, both of them, but more so Nate. I feel like. Uh, when you look at the attributes that he has, mm. elite boxing, black belt yeah. level jujitsu, insane stamina and endurance, um, durable. I think he's only been knocked out once. But I just mm. see, in my opinion, poor decision making during his fights, like a very low fight IQ. Mm. He doesn't seem to utilize that great skill set that he has. Do you think he views, because this is, this is what I have an issue with. Prime, sorry, prime example, um, Leon, Edward, Leon Edwards. Mm -hmm. He's losing like four rounds to nil. We have my guy, you've got him with a clean punch, clean jab. My guy's wobbly. He's doing all this kind of clown stuff. Yeah, taunting, not, showboating. I don't, I, I, is, is it, are you doing that because you're not confident you can finish him off or is it a case that we just don't actually care? Like, what do you guys think about that? I'm, I'm, I'm a bit conflicted. I'll tell you what it is, yeah? So, do you want me, you say something, yeah? No, no, you go right, on. So, I'll tell you what, what it is, yeah? Your corner has a job and your corner is to make you aware of where your ego is standing in the way of your progression and also the things in the match that you can't see because you're in it, which might right. still be classed as your ego, yeah? Like we all have an ego. The ego is not a wrong thing. Now, if we just take it in, in contrast back, yeah? So you're losing against Leon Edwards four rounds, yeah? Um, you're, that's what you just said, yeah? Yeah. You've yeah. got to go out and you've got to knock him out. And your coach, what does he tell you? Listen to what the corner tells the fighters in certain rounds. You've got a contrast. You've got Mayweather walking up to the um, tank. Brother, you're losing. Is that what I'm losing? Yeah, you're losing. What does tank do? Light him up. Yeah? You've got, um, I watched Bud against... Oh, Spence. No, Bud versus um, Porter. Yeah? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And man said, well, he's got, you're up. And Bud was like, what? He's up. The rounds. So he's up. Right, he's up, cool, cool, cool. Came out, duck, whoop, drops him. Yeah? Wicked. If your corner's telling you, don't worry, man, the judges are full of rubbish anyway, man. You're doing good, man. You keep doing what you're doing, Nate. You keep doing what you're doing, Nick. You keep doing Bob, whoever. What? Like, what? You're, you're going to be fooled into thinking there's a problem. Yes, man. And when you've had your whole career be based off blaming others for the problem. Yeah. Yeah? It's going to be very difficult for you to see the wood from the trees. Do you know what I mean by that? Because you put your trust in your coach. So your coach is supposed to be giving you the reality. And I think even yesterday, he fought, when he fought Jake Paul, I think only in the last round, his coach is telling him about knocking man out. Yeah, what? too little, too late. Yes, man. This is this is the issue that I have. There's too much because because of who, who I can't talk about the issue that they have or, or don't have, right? Yeah. But it's clear <clears throat> from the outside looking in, it's a yes man thing that he has around him because you may fear. I don't know if it be the case. You may fear. That if we disagree with my guy, that he may dispute you, then start cussing you out, maybe come after you a little bit, and you may feel like, oh, you're not on my side, you're against me. But for me, it's important to have a reality check with, for me, the people who care about you the most will tell you when you fall down, or when you're in the wrong. Yeah. And allow you to say, look, I'm still with you, I'm still with you, they, they ain't nothing but just, this is what it is. Yeah. Keeping it real, so to speak. You're 100. Right. But you see, this is the why the importance of a corner in something like MMA, because there's so many factors in MMA that's going on. There's judges judging the match. There's what's actually happening in the match. There's injuries that are pertaining to you personally. Mm. There's your history. So you're like, your coach might tap you and say, but I remember I was in training the other day and you tweaked your ankle. You can't be throwing that kick. I know in the fight you want to throw that kick. Stop throwing that kick. Go to A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Sometimes you need that reminder. Correct. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes you need a reminder. Even in jiu-jitsu, you need a reminder. Mum will tell you, brother, you've been hitting that sweep. You, mum will look at you from the side and give you that, put, do the sweep. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Sometimes you, when you're watching a jiu-jitsu match, you hear people talking in code. The thing from last week, you're like, what? What, yeah, <laughs> what yeah. happened last week, bro? I need to know what happened last week because I need mm. to be privy to this. And then when you look at the flip side of it, you look at someone like uh, Tim, Tim Bradley. Mm. I think he had to knock someone out for two years. You know the fireman speech in the corner? Have you ever seen that, the, the boxing match? He, says, you're, you're, he said, you're a fireman, yeah? And he goes, what do firemen do? We put out the fire. And he got, bro, the way he speaks, this Tim Bradley's coach speaks to him, I've never, it's, even now, it's making my spine shiver, bro. 
the what he says to him, I've never heard seen someone be affected so much by what someone says to them. He said to him, but he said um something like, he said um we're in the fire right now, yeah, and what do we do in the fire? What he goes, we're firemen. So what do we do in the fire? Yeah, we put the fire. We live in the fire. The fire doesn't scare us. We live in. Bro, I've seen this, he yeah. just got up, boom, done, match finished, bro. You know what I'm saying to you, like. And sometimes you need that in your corner. Yeah. So when you don't see that in a corner, if if it can have such positive effects, not having it in your corner can only be attributed to such negative 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 effects. Obviously, every fight is a fighter, but you got to think. You, if you were so confident that you, if you your confidence was your corner wasn't influential, you wouldn't bring them with you. So we have to take it into account that their corner is influential. I can't remember which fight it was he put his wife in this corner because. Perry. Oh, that was his girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. Wait, of all so do you mean, sorry, come on, it's happened, this happened twice, by the yeah. way, two different girls. So do you mean the, like, the blonde or do you mean the brunette? <laughs> Which he didn't care because why? The corner is not an integral part of his 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 match. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. For you to bring someone and st and the man, you're going into the cage, man's vest, yeah. tapping you on your legs. But I see man get boxed in their face by their corner. Yeah. I see man hug their corner like their life's going to end if they don't hug their corner. Man. Oh, bro, that reminds me of, um, um, what's, what's it? Um, Cyborg. Yeah, and and the coach was hitting her face beforehand. Yeah, she's a monster. <laughs> Different level. Yeah. You know, this, you know, this, you know. Do you know when you realize that someone's a monster? Yeah, even when she lost against Nunes, did you realize that her response to getting banged in the face was to throw more punches? If she covered up for for maybe ten seconds, she could have won that. Just to, just recoup, find a space. Her total response, that whole shooter box response, is fire with fire. Look at Vandalay versus Brian Stan. Don't know if you've seen that punch off. They have a punch off, yeah, in the corner, yeah, in the cage. And it is so stupid. Like, there's so much space to go into. They was like, no, we're just going to have a punch off. Vandalay ends up dropping, getting dropped to one knee. But it's like his knee touch, it just bounces back up. That whole old school shooter box style is like, you're going to fight fire with fire, bro. You look at um, Cyborg Evangelista, mm. who used to be with Chris Cyborg. And when he fought um, uh, Nick Diaz, same thing. Stood in the pocket, kicking, kicking, swinging, kicking, swinging, kicking, kicking, swinging. Like that mentality. I'm not saying it's, it's I think it's brilliant. It's lovely to watch. As a and, fan. As yeah. a fan. And I think 99% at, at the time, it will pay dividends. But the 1% it does, doesn't, that what it, the consequence is loss. It's not, oh, I, I did that and I got punched hard and then, Oh, I got a black eye, so I had to read. Mm. No, it's literally, it's like on your shield, bro. That's one of them, man. So, I feel like I'm just got a drudge. Yeah. Nunes. Not Nunes. Um, Nama Yunus. Is that Nama Yunus? Well, who fought yesterday? Yeah, she fought. She got. She got, she got and Drudge got beaten by Tatian Suarez, who is a teammate of Lopez. So I think it's Suarez's dad that coaches him. He's a boxing coach for all of them. Him, Costa, Costa. Well, Paulo Costa. No, Alessandro Costa, um, Diego Lopez, and her yeah. all have the same corner. Crazy. Yeah, bro. So he was bringing that, they were saying that he's churning out a lot of good fighters because they get good hands. <clears throat> Old school, like Mexican style boxing. They got really good, gritty boxing. Do you know what I mean? And then the jiu jitsu as well. It's levels, man. It's levels, 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 man. What do you think the best base is for MMA? If you had to build a fighter, what, what arts would you give them? Um, Tough if we question. separate, if we separate grappling, grappling into individual arts, yeah. For me, Carson Gracie Jiu Jitsu, <laughs> and I was very specific of how I said it. Yeah, the reason I'm saying that it's Jiu Jitsu. I'd say Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I'm saying rough man Jiu Jitsu. So I could say wrestling, but wrestling wouldn't. It's a, good, it's a phenomenal base but it doesn't set you up for submissions. Whereas if you learn jujitsu in an old school wrestling, hard, gritty, grimy way, you can have adequate wrestling for MMA in the process. So I would still say, I would still say jujitsu. Just jujitsu? As, no, as a base. But, but if I was building, I'd probably go jujitsu, boxing, jujitsu and boxing. Go jujitsu and boxing. No more time. No, go boxing. If I, if I was gonna go Muay Thai, I'd say I'd rather say K one. I wouldn't say Muay Thai. Why? Because the stance in Muay Thai, <coughs> Muay Thai fighters in general, that's why 
Muay Thai fighters in general can also have a habit of neglecting work in their hands. That's why Dutch Thai, or K1, yeah, Dutch Thai, their hands are a lot better. So Mike's gym is renowned for getting people with really good hands. Go Kansaki, uh, Tyrone Spong. Like, the, 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 that's, I'm not calling that Thai. I'm looking at Thai boxing as traditional Thai. Yeah. Do you know what I mean by that? Whereas, say so if I said, when I say K1, I'm not talking about kickboxing, I'm talking about like K1, fighters that do Thai in K1. So I'd pick a, maybe a European style of uh, Thai boxing if I was on there. I'd, go, I'd pick a Mike's gym type of fighter, bro. Hands, elbows, knees, but good boxing. Solid bo I think solid boxing shows, bro. Footwork, uh, ability to, to to cover up your vulnerable areas of your body, uh, devastated and quite literate in the sense of before you know how to fight or you learn how to fight, you know you kind of got an idea that throwing a punch makes sense. Yeah. You wouldn't go to throw a kick without kick training. You feel like you're gonna fall over, lose balance. It the risk the risk is too much. Yeah. Because I think to, if you're honing on someone's natural strengths and you teach them boxing, the footwork is the main element. The punch is if I say to my son throw an uppercut, you can throw an uppercut. It's not a good uppercut, but he understands the motions of the punches. It gets a bit techy when you start throwing in elbows, knees, and what it compromises. Do you know what I mean? So I would, I would still say, boxing more than I'd say boxing and jujitsu. Interesting. Sorry, I, I, this is this is a thing for me. So, um, I I want to go to so many different directions today, mm. but the one thing I wanted to talk about, which was uh, uh, for me, not talked about enough, is the connection with, with fighters and media. And then what media say about these fighters. So there's many things that happened. So recently had Errol Spence versus Terence Crawford. Mm -hmm. And obviously Crawford like just demolished um Errol Spence. I don't know if you got out that surprised me personally, mm. but it was crazy. Now imagine that is the first time that Spence has lost in his career. Like the first time he's been finished, TK order essentially, right. Had an issue with what was said afterwards. Mm -hmm. And it kind of explains why boxing is the way it is right now in terms of big name fighters not fighting each other. Yeah. Stephen A. Smith said mm -hmm. oh. what, that uh, Errol Spence... Yeah. He said A. Smith. Remember what, yeah. what the middle initial? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's his question, Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> he said that Spence should retire. Yeah. Now, me personally, I'm not really for... Uh, I don't really take stuff on board like that, but I take this one on board because it was his first loss. It's the first time he's been outclassed and his immediate response to seeing that was to tell him to retire. Mm -hmm. And then you then wonder why don't big name bosses don't want to take fights. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to, I agree with you, yeah? I'll tell you where the problem lies in that. It's, language is a very powerful thing. When we use words, again, like I said, I think I said this on episode one, they go into transit and it's how they're perceived. Yeah. So sometimes your intention isn't taken on board, it's, what, it's how it's perceived. Now that being said, the word you used to describe the match was demolished. If somebody, something gets demolished, you get rid of it. So maybe we have to start using better language mm. as well, because I, I know what you meant, like when you said, okay, outclassed. I, I agree, in that boxing match, he was outclassed. Yeah, nice. But you know what's actually mad? The way I rate Spence, yeah, for that fight, people don't understand. And I've seen him win however many times. I just thought to myself, you dug deep, the ref stopped the match, bro. And the ref stopped it rightly so, but you, you could have gone down. You could have stopped throwing your punches. You could have. You were trying to get back in it the whole time. Bud was just on a different level of focus and technique that time. And those who know would have said, I think I was speaking to um like one of my really close friends here, yeah, Abu Sufyan, and he said, uh, if you know boxing, you'll know that Bud's a more technical boxer, a more rounded boxer than Spence. Marginally, but Bud is like, on paper, if you look at what he's able to do and the range he's got with his punches and what he's able to do, it's brilliant. But the size was something that everyone was doubting that he was going to be able to manage. And what he did was he made Spence's size make Spence look slow. And I think it's the first time I've seen Spence look like he's being beaten to continually to punches to the degree where he couldn't get his head out of the way he couldn't function that way and again we was all about character building and losing earlier on sometimes when like in a match to reshuffle and rechange change what you plan to do during a match is really difficult let alone in a career 
So if you've had success for the whole of your career doing something and it's not working right now today and someone's like, okay, you got, you got, you, how, what's the break between, the, between uh, round one minute? A minute you've got a minute to change it. Then you go in and you think, okay, cool, I've changed it a bit. Then he's changed it a bit because he's already got a plan to what to do if it keeps working. So then he's changed and modifying it and it's, it's becoming different. Different and your morale's getting beaten out of you. It's getting beaten out of you. It's getting beaten out of you. For his, so for him to stand there as a man and fight and get the match stopped in the last minute, firstly, no one don't have the right to tell him to retire. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. What you think doesn't matter. Yeah? I'll be honest with you. What the media thinks doesn't matter for to make a concrete statement. If you make a finalizing statement as a member of the media, it's I, I can't even hear you anymore. You've just condemned, you've condemned someone to, to, to your decision. I ain't got no time for that, bro. This no time for that. Do you know what I mean? You could say, oh, maybe he should think about it. Maybe there's options here, options here. Maybe he could go to another training camp. There's so many different things you could say. Talking about a better retiring. After their first loss. After as well. their first loss. Yeah. And losing to a world class fighter. There's this no is shame what I'm in saying. That. There was no no shame in that. I I encourage it. The same thing with Tank and um um who's it? Ryan Garcia this year, earlier yeah. this year. Yeah. I was happy for that because it was like the first time where we've seen it was more encouraged to see it and then see it months after that. Another one. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping this kind of continues, bro. Like, I'm hoping to see, again, um, Tyson or Joshua or, do you know what I mean? Um, Usyk yeah. and, 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 and Tyson. Do you know what I mean? Just hit, hit continuing, yeah. kind of happening down that road, bro. But mm. it's kind of a, a bit, too much of a kind of, of a, of a mess. But me, is a very funny thing, yeah? And I think we both know where we're going to go with this, mm -hmm. yeah? And where we're going to go with it is going to highlight probably even worse. Now, everyone has an opinion, yeah? But everyone's opinion is not of the same value. Correct. Mm. And what the media does is you get, a, you're not given accreditations as a media reporter necessarily based upon your knowledge of the subject or how right you are. Sometimes we, reward, we, we, we are rewarding controversy. So we're rewarding the person who's most outspoken and who gives the opinion of the masses. Yeah. The opinion of the masses is not, the most valid opinion. Again, mm. all opinions are not equal. They all can get said. They can all, but we shouldn't give the platform or the credence to some people to give such 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 opinions. And journalism, that if we look at media, if we look at, uh, we call those people in the media journalists, yeah? Journalism is partly supposed to provide information, yeah? To give an impartial view on something, yeah? You stop doing journalism when you're giving your opinion. You become a chatty patty. Yeah? We're talking. We're giving our opinions. But we're, it's a, it's, there's a group of us. So what we're doing here is a group of us. It, there is going to be contrast by default. So even if I'm very ignorant in my view on something, the fact that there's someone else sitting right next to me whose view is might be completely different allows the people watching to, to draw from the different bits of information coming from each person. When you've got a media outlet that is controlled the media and does it, it gets very techy with that. Like, I don't know if any of you have ever, have you ever rung, rung up LBC or anything like that before? No. no. Right, if you ring them up, this is a very weird thing. You give someone the control that you're debating with to mute you and put down the phone on you and say the last thing. Do you know how wild that is? So you could say something to someone. I've heard it many times on LBC. Someone's talking and they make a point. They put down the phone and say, and anyway, we'll do it. Roddy, 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 And that was stupid, but we'll leave you with your ignorant self. They move on to the next caller. So the argument's won without even being an argument. Yeah. It stops being an argument of a uh, 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 sharing of views and a rebuttal. It's you say something, I say something, and that's the end of it. Final say. So it's, it's how the media tends to work. Do you know what I mean? And in combat sports, I don't know if I'm, yeah, it probably is waffle, but it's life. Yeah. Um, in combat sports, I find when you've got a, a, someone who is solely a spectator, who has not done anything similar to what you're doing. Mm. So if you have an elite sports person from another elite sport uh, commentating or being a journalist on something, I understand how they can give an opinion because their opinion is based upon the technique, the skill and the assets that are required to do the sport. If you're not or a sport or something to elite level, do you know what I mean? does it make sense? So someone who studied to be a doctor might be able to relate to someone who studied to be a black belt in jiu-jitsu. Not because it's the same thing, but because they understand how to follow a course of study, the adversity that comes in, yeah. the incremental elements of, okay, 
you get your degree, then you become get your masters, then you get your doctorate. Like they can understand purple, brown, black. They yeah. can get that, yeah. But when you've got someone who's a fence sitter, just talking, 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 it gets really messy, bro. Do you know what I mean? True. It gets too messy, man. Too messy. So this is what I, I think was uh, why I want to talk about this as well, because recently you had Jamal Hill and Errol Hawani or mm-hmm. Hilwani or Hawani, whatever you want to call mm-hmm. it. <laughs> and it, this kind of followed on from about, I believe, six months ago when Jamal won the title. Mm-hmm. And he was called up because of, before that, Yannan had fought a guy, Uncle Live. Yeah. Which was a very, very close match. Very good match. I liked it. It got a bit of um, Stick negative re- reviews, but I enjoyed it for what it was. It, it was a back and forth match. It was very, very equal. Mm-hmm. And the, but Dana White didn't like it, so he decided to um, do a match between Jamal Hill and I think it's Glover Tashira, if yeah. I'm correct, for the Vega Championship. And that, again, that match between Jamal Hill and, and Glover was a beautiful matchup. It was just, I was proud of both fighters, really, to be honest with you, because yeah. Glover, again, turned about the time, he's like, what, 42, 43? Mm. Going against a young guy, he's like, what, 30, I believe. And it was just, uh, <laughs> again, proud. But then to have a guy, Eric Hawani, didn't want to give him, give him his credence. Yeah. Um, at the time, and had like a very big, um, we've seen that to me, and um, watching it again, it's a back and forth with a fighter. You know, giving him his, his flowers, you're kind of saying, eh, you know, it was all right. Yeah. It wasn't all that. Well, you're not, you're not Yuri, um, yeah. for, for an example, and you're creating this kind of tension. Again, like you were saying before, I've not known um, how I need to be in any sports, compete, train, yeah. cut weight, and then having to... Compete against yeah. another individual in anything. So let's not even... I agree with you. So let's say he's a genius, he's done all of his degree and everything. We're talking about competition now. So yeah. if you've got a competitor who's competing against someone in anything, so I mean chess, they can relate because they know what it's like to be under the lights, under the pressure, having to combat somebody changing their technique. And sorry to cut you, yeah. this is another, this is why even as it, it's, 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 I'm actually annoyed, didn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. the more and more I've listened to it and the more and more I process it, it's the more irritating it is. So Yuri beat Tashera, yeah? Mm. In a match where he was losing every single round and won in however many seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Jamal Hill beat Tashera maybe three of the five rounds, maybe yeah. four, maybe, maybe it could have been five or five. Yeah. But I remember seeing a dominance level. It was a little, it's like Tashera couldn't, wasn't winning each round, yeah? Because you can only judge round for round. I can say to show had, he's, well, he's one of my favorite fighters of all time. So I'm not dis- digging at him. I mean, like, Jamal really, I was so impressed that he stopped to share from doing yeah. what he's doing and was scoring, scoring, doing uh, things in the match that were momentous and 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 taking the sway of the match, output wise, um, significant strike wise. There was so much he was doing in the match. But you got chat for Jamal Hill. Why? Because he ain't got abs or he ain't got a ponytail in the top of his head. Mm. Or we don't, do you know what I'm saying? He hasn't got the look. He's not, he's not selling to another audience. Because remember, Yuri goes to another side of the world. Yeah. Do you see what I mean by that? Jamil Hill is like, okay, cool. American. We've got, we've got that in there. Do you know what I'm trying to say to you? So with them type of things, it's one of them things where people have got to look at it and say, hold on a minute. Like, what is the motivation for Ariel Hawani digging at him? Mm. And we've got to look at it. And someone said it online, is that it's like he's digging at him because he won an initial argument. So the initial conversation they had, because he got shut down with facts, he then started to dig, dig and prod 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 and prod. And lo and behold, when it comes down to it, Eri Hawani now is now playing the moral high ground over the over the fighter, over the light heavyweight fighter. Well, bro, if he's a light heavyweight fighter, maybe you should have thought about running your mouth. Don't play the mm-hmm. victim of something now. Yeah. You should have thought about flying your mouth. Like, this is the light heavyweight champ of the world, bro. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, who, like, who are you talking to, bro? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's ridiculous, man. Ridiculous. It's even the subtle things he does. Like, he was calling Jamal Hill the former champion. <laughs> and at the same time, when uh, when Jury, um, when he relinquished the title, he, he was calling him the, the current champion. So, it's even subtle things like that, I don't yeah. rate. Really. That's what he does, though, bro. That's what he's known for. Don't get me wrong. The input is very, very clear. Obviously, um, Ariel's put a lot of work into his craft. Respect for that. Respect mm-hmm. for all the stuff that, that he's like, he was there when, when MMA wasn't really, there wasn't any money in the MMA spiral at that time. He put in the work. But now you're in a position 
where you can now even help the new generation come through. As you said, it's meant to be a case of you're meant to be impartial. You're yeah. not meant to, have, you can have your favorite. It's not, you can have your favorite. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But just on, on the public platform, just don't be so, I don't know, obvious with it. Just be feeling like the guy fine, but just be objective at least. Don't need to then try and sabotage him talking about domestic violence and try and put words in people's mouths yeah. as to what they didn't say. You brought up a subject that had nothing to do with the fighter and then got shut down again, embarrassed. And then tries to keep putting and putting and putting to, to get a little uh, sound about a sound clip. And then, as you said, was be like, oh, I never done anything. Yeah. It wasn't me. I'm just a humble journalist. It's like, it, it was quite, for me, it was just a bit disingenuous. Yeah. And you it, see, when someone has to draw for evidence from something you've allegedly done to somebody else, yeah. they fame your character, it's a, it's a very warped thing. So you raise an issue with me because I've done something to you. So I say, yeah, but when you did something to Bob, I didn't say anything. Yeah, it's a weird angle. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why, who, who are you to say something? Trust me. Bro, who are you to say something? Furthermore, if your mouth's so big in the first place because you're a journalist, you, I shouldn't have beat you to the, beat you to the, to, to the Twitter to say something. You should have been saying something first. What were you saying? They were saying to you. It, bro, it's, it, the way that guy thinks, I'll tell you when I clocked it from Rampage Jackson. Rampage mm. Jackson highlighted it years ago. The way Eric Hall only goes on. And Thanks. to the point where he used to banter and say, I'm not talking to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You from me, I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you. Pride type of days, yeah? yeah. I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you. And he kept prodding, kept prodding, kept prodding. Diaz brothers, they had a little bit of a thing where, nah, bro. It's every Hawaiian guy's moving mad. But remember, it's always easy, yeah, to, to look like you're the little guy with the glasses, little slim guy with the glasses, and you've got heavyweight who kicks people in the head in pride arguing with you. You've got the Diaz brothers who are, who are thugs and they're arguing with you. Is that what I mean? You've got Jamel Hill, he's, he's there, he's, he, he, he's the, the light heavyweight thug dealing with you. So it's very easy to look like the victim in that scenario. You know what I'm trying to say to you? And I can go into that into more detail or less detail. Mm. There's a lot of angles I can come at that with. But it's very ironic that he's never, he's the victim of something all the better. time. Yeah? And it's not, it's not a good look, bro. It's not a good look. It's crazy to me. I find it quite, um, I find it quite hilarious actually, to be honest with you. But, Fine enough, in that same interview you had with um, Jamal Hill originally, mm. all the comments below were on his ass. Like, yeah, I was like, come on, that, what were we talking about just now? Yeah. Similar kind of things. What you what you questioned about was nothing to relate to my guy. Why was he questioning about that kind mm -hmm. of stuff? You're very snaky. What's happening here, my guy? Where are we going on? You lost 10-7. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got bodied. <laughs> but the problem is, Jamal Hill has no power to be able to prevent Eri Hawani's voice. Eri Hawani has power to be able to stop Jamal Hill's voice. Mm -hmm. That's why Jamal Hill having his own channel on YouTube and doing his own thing makes sense because you're hearing from a fighter about yeah. fighting. Yeah, Facts. And that's the power that he's got to be able to, to, not, to not allow his voice to be stifled. The reason why Eri Hawani and the likes of him have had so much success is because they can do the equivalent, like I said to you, of turning off the mic. So when it gets too techy, I just turn off your mic. You can't talk. I can talk. Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean, I don't mean it's so much literal. I mean, th figuratively, like I won't invite you back on my show. Then I'm going to interview a bunch of people that already have a problem with you. And they're going to talk about other problems with you. And I'm going to go like this again. It wasn't me. I didn't say it. I didn't invite them like that. I just invited them to talk about something else. And it, it just spiraled in. He has that power to do that. Yeah. You know I mean, so I think it's one thing for people to be commenting in the comments, but we've got to look at what we're supporting. Mm. Them same people need to be jumping over to Jamal Hill's channel mm. and subscribing and signing up and listening to what he's got to say. Oh, for real. You know what I mean? Do shot, remove what makes the guy powerful over someone and just to make it an even playing field. You don't even have to go and subscribe. Just remove your support of the waffle mm. and let them waffle on their own, bro. Do you know what I'm trying to say to you? I'm happy that when I watched about it, because I got it afterwards, you know, after the discussion we had. Yeah, yeah. And when I watched it, I didn't watch it on his channel. I didn't do it deliberately, but now I'm thinking, I'm like, I'm so happy I didn't go on his channel, go and watch it, give him more hits, mm. let it lie in his pockets. Don't have to you. I watched it on someone else's channel, a British guy's channel. You know what I'm saying? MMA Guru. MMA Guru. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean, so if we're talking, yeah, Broke pick up MMA well. Guru, go and watch that. If you yeah. don't want to watch about it, go and watch it on that. You know what I mean? Don't support foolishness. Do you know what I mean? Facts. Don't support foolishness, bro. Facts, man. Facts, facts, facts. I feel like the media, um, going back to what we were saying earlier about, you know, biases and stuff. Mm. It's meant to be their job to give us the facts and then us as viewers formulate the opinion. 
Yeah. I find what's happening a lot now is they're giving us the the opinions and then we have to like dig deeper and find the facts. A hundred percent. Way to come back go with about it. it. And the layman will not look for the facts because a lot of people they want to go with the wave. Yeah. So they'll just take the information as as as, as facts as being told that it's, that it's alleged facts and run with it because you don't want to be the guy that stands out. Especially when you have it going around the same headline from each each um, publication. Yes. Yeah. Da, 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 da. So you're seeing it. So you are. If if someone's so saying it, it's also saying it, it's also saying it, and it must be true. Right. So years ago, there was a difference. It's not so much difference, it's a bit blurred now, between a tabloid and a broadsheet newspaper. Mm. And what normally happens is when you get a, a tabloid newspaper, it gives you an opinion and a headline, big, broad headline and an opinion. The tabloid and, what did I say? Broadsheet. Broadsheet. The bullshit paper will give you a bunch of information. It'll give you a headline, but if you look, there's so much more information on the page that you can read through and go through. You have mm. access to the information. The question we've got to ask ourselves is this new form of media that we're using, new, showing my age, but the more common form of media that we're using right now is interviews, YouTube, and so on and so mm. forth. Does it resemble a tabloid more? Or does it resemble an, uh, a broadsheet? Or does it resemble uh, um, a university paper that you have access to? I would argue it's more of a tabloid because at university, for example, you have to do a bibliography and show your sources and it has to be credible. Yeah. Right. Whereas now everyone has their own channel, everyone's saying their opinion. Right. So that's from from that moment, yeah, a tabloid, yeah, has pictures on page three of this, gambling on that page, this, that. Bro, out of the newspaper, you might pull out the sports page. You've got a bit to pull out. So when you listen to these people, take it with a pinch of salt because they're not experts. Do you know what I mean? An expert doesn't mean you've been around something for a long long period of time. Mm. It means you've assessed what you've been around for a long time and formulated a good mm. way of dealing with the information. Do you know what I mean? You don't just get marks for presence, bro. You tick on the register because you've been there for five years. I mean, you know what you're talking about. It doesn't. And that includes me. I don't know. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Do you know what I mean? But I tell you this right now. If you don't agree with my opinion, it's good because there's other people here that there's other opinions that you can listen to. Do you know what I'm trying to say to you? Do it. Do you know what I mean? Do it. I mean, do you find that, particularly from this, I'm gonna go in a bit of a different direction. But do you find that, um, let's say for example, you get limited information that comes out from particular sources. So if you got UFC, mm -hmm. obviously at the end of each um, pay per view, they will say to you, "Oh, this amount of seats that were sold, these were the bonuses, um, and yeah, and these were whatever." Okay, so it gave you the bunch of stats. What it was, how much money it's made. Mm. Ever broke records or not, um, for example, but they won't ever 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 tell you. Um, the contracts also been written. The contracts for these fighters, everyone's going to be a bit different. How the or how the organization runs in general. To ask these questions, it's like you can ask them, but they'll never really give you any more information. So it's like back in the day with, um, for example, at WWE, mm -hmm. there was a point where different wrestlers were getting different pay money. Top mm -hmm. wrestlers, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, and they all thought they were getting the same the same one. And so one day, um, one of them was like, well, I think Shawn Michaels was each talking to like maybe um, Kevin Nash or, mm. or, or, or um, what's his name? Razor Ramon. Mm. And they'll find out they're getting different amounts. And they'll go to Vince like, yo, uh, how, why is my guy getting so, so, so much? Yeah. And then it created like a thing where now everyone has to get equal pay, equal yeah. pay in, in, in that thing. Mm. I feel like I feel like contracts are a bit of a techie thing when it comes to money, yeah? Yeah. Because it depends what you're paying for. If you're paying for star power, if you're paying for technique, if you're paying for ability. I guess as an example, this is the problem I have with um, the influencer boxing on the level that Jake Paul was doing it on, yeah? Mm -hmm. You're rewarding less skilled boxers <coughs> with more money trained and skilled boxers you see the thing is though it's a spectator sport and if you're attracting if you've got low level skill if you're, if you're a white belt yeah. and you can get 10 million people to watch your matches do you deserve more money than a black belt that only has 50 man watching depends what you're paying for that's why I said the red of I said it depends what the contract is paying for so my thing is this is when we're talking about we want to see elite sports people I don't think everybody wants to see elite sports people. That's not what you want to see. You want to see a mismatch, mismatch then. The most exciting, a, mis, a, 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 a mismatch fight 
with someone who is entertaining on another platform, maybe somebody who has an OnlyFans. What is it that people want? Do you understand what I'm saying? And that's, I understand there is a difference of opinion on what people want from something. But my thing is, is the problem that it's, that, that it's going to, going to, we were already talking about, obviously boxers get a lot of money. Yeah. So you imagine now if they did influencer MMA. I'd love that. It, but MMA fighters are already complaining about the pay that they get. Yeah. So imagine an elite MMA fighter complaining about the pay that he gets and then seeing Bob from Bob Zara's YouTube channel getting paid 70 times what he gets paid. Yeah. To go in and f- and do the maddest form of armbar you've ever seen in your life, and have a mad match. It, we've got if we're calling something an elite. Remember, boxing is one of the oldest combat sports to become a to be to be to mm-hmm. become a sport. So not a martial art to be to become a sport, and it's got all of these things. I'm not saying that people don't have the right to get paid or not to, or, or or to follow these type of things through. But I mean, we're rewarding. That behavior, so we should expect the next generation to emulate that behavior. So if we keep doing that, when something gets lost and it becomes a historical thing, do you remember when boxing used to have boxers that fought in amateur matches before they ever made it pro? Yeah. Or they fought in the Olympics. What? Why? If you're a boxer and you're a kid, why would you want to fight in the Olympics? They're moving, aren't they? Boxing. They're not, are they? It's either boxing or judo or wrestling. It's one of the combat sports. That's been... Wrestling, I heard about wrestling. I heard about wrestling. Is that being removed? Why would they? Why would? You, what would be your motivation to do it? <laughs> If your motivation is to be to be elite, are you elite because of a medal that says that you're an Olympian and you face the best people? Or you or you're or you or are you elite because you've made the most social impact? Maybe yeah, both. I think some people are wired differently. Yeah. Like even in jujitsu, you see some people that prefer to go down a super super fight route to make mm. more money. Mm. And then you see other people that care about the accolades and just want to win mm. the ADCCs, the worlds, mm. the polarities, etc. It's like um Muhammad Ali. So, because you were talking about this, right? So, he's considered to be the greatest boxer of all time, not just because of his boxing skills in the ring, but because he fought outside the ring with... with so, the, right, but that's social change. Social change is different from personal gain. So, social change is different from personal accolades of being being popular, of popularity. Yeah. yeah? If you ask Muhammad Ali if he, want, if he wants to be popular, okay? overall, I don't think he would use his popularity to, to do that. We're talking about an activist. Yeah. So, the... The and the thing, the difference between a jiu-jitsu super fight is this: if they put you in a jiu-jitsu super fight to win money against someone who doesn't do jiu-jitsu, so you were not fighting the elite person. The difference is a jiu-jitsu super fight is normally matched up with some type of eliteness. So even if you don't win the accolade, you have beaten a top level opponent. Correct. The point of the matter is, is, with this boxing, it's not top level. It's not. It's not okay. Mayweather fighting fighting someone. Deji. Deji, but but there's you're not allowed to knock out. They've take the rules have been modified for that purpose. Yeah. So I'm saying it was not we're not talking about a super fight's different because it's elite versus elite. It's just not without a title. So I can accept that. That's not an issue to me. Do you know what I mean? If you said, okay, cool, WBBC can't agree on Canelo versus so and so, so we're gonna get them on misfits and pay them however much money and just get them to rock. It won't go down on their records, but you don't get to see the two best people fight. Mm. Yeah? That's different. That's what a super fight in jiu-jitsu looks like to me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like all right, cool. We can't get them in IBJJF. They might not be the same way. It might be the brackets might be a bit different, or IBJJF don't allow a rule that Gordon Ryan won't do, for example. So let's get Gordon versus Penner and get them to rock it out on this show and give them peace for it. You're still seeing the two elite elite fighters mm. by, by some by some by some stretch stretch. You don't get okay, cool. Little old Luke's gonna get paid more peace because I, I I I'm sitting on a podcast every couple of weeks, so I, I get paid more peace than 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 Bushesha. A bit wild, didn't it? I mean, it's a little bit techy. You know, get, get a bit. But then if you put more eyes to the sport, mm-hmm. there is an argument. But I get what you're saying. Sport. But here's my point: the sport of boxing is not the same sport that they're doing. Do you see? It's going to encourage people. If it's to make the sport of boxing grow, how does having more kids that want to be involved in uh, those type of super fights grow the sport of boxing? It doesn't grow the sport of boxing. It grows a separate version of the same sport. It doesn't grow the sport of boxing. The sport of boxing has to have 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 a root. Yeah, like a, a tree trunk. It has to have a root. So if people are saying, okay, I want to become a boxer now so I can fight on uh, KSI, whoever's show. And it's no dig at any of them. I'm just saying, using an example of KSI, whoever's show. 
Okay, cool. They go to a boxing gym. Okay, do you want to do the ABAs? No. Guess I didn't do the ABAs. Yeah. Do you, do you want to go in? No, I don't want to go in this. Guess I didn't do the Olympics. What do you want to do? I just want you to ring. I want to cut a promo video right now, cussing someone, and I want you to get me a fight on that show, and I'll go and fight on it. What about if you lose? Doesn't matter because I get paid 10 more. How, that makes the sport of boxing grow. I don't know if it does. It's, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't. it's not making the sport of boxing grow. It's creating its own avenue. I think it depends on the mindset because, all right, jujitsu. Mm -hmm. Why did you start jujitsu? Like, what was what motivated you? In general, uh, I was at martial arts from when I was a kid. I did uh, judo for a bit when I was younger. Um, judo uh, became Muslim when I was in my twenties. I wanted to go back and do judo as a grappling art because it's close to the behavior of the Prophet Muhammad said, like it's grappling. So we wrestle and grapple. It's, it's like it's a you call it like a it's like a sunnah thing to do. So it's it's a it's an advised way of keeping fit and keeping strong and healthy. So I remember ringing up the judo association. I said, look, I'm I can't bow. I don't really like roll with women or like for religious reasons. But the main thing with them, I think it was the bowing. I spoke to them about bowing first. You even get past to the next phase of okay. And most everywhere I've been, I can say, look, I'm even the women that I've trained with, they understand I don't touch. Like, it's not, it's not my, it's just for religious reasons. I said to them, I'm not allowed to bow. They laughed at me. Said you can't do judo. Bro. I said, what? I'm not bowing. I said if, you can't, if you're not willing to bow, I can't do judo. Yeah, man. Do you remember? Yeah, bro. Like I don't, know, I don't know how, I don't know how often you've competed. I have no idea. Mm. But the one thing I noticed, and this, uh, it's not me trying to be bad mind or nothing like that. I'm just simply just stating what it, what it is, mm. right? These men are really, very, very, very traditional. Good or bad. Whether you think it's good or bad, it's a very, very traditional. It's to the point where I know people don't didn't like it when I go to the floor and mash men up on the floor. Yeah, you, you can see, like, you can see, like, a, a different kind of... Energy you get. It was a different kind of, like, oh, what, what, what's that? And because they're of a certain generation, where they're very traditional, as I said to you before, you, you're kind of, like, looked down upon. In, in a sense. So what, and the irony of that for me is, the ground is is a big part of judo because it comes from jiu-jitsu or traditional jiu-jitsu. I don't, I don't like calling it Japanese jiu-jitsu. Traditional yeah. jiu-jitsu. Where you have striking, you have grappling, you have everything you are, is involved in it in the first place anyway. So why do you feel that, if you want to be so traditional, why do you feel that you're so against the groundwork in judo? You guys basically gave birth to like jiu-jitsu essentially. Um, with business judges, I should, I should say. So they are very, very biased against certain things, um, essentially. So and the more you do these comps, you, 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 you will see for yourself, bro. It's, it's, it's mad. mad because it's so weird because I'm not saying that's everybody in judo, but I remember ringing that the judo association. I rang, I can't remember who it was as many years ago. I rang whoever I contacted. It wasn't like Bob Bob's dojo around the corner, and it was just him who told me that. Bob's my favorite guy at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> like, whoever it was, I didn't just realize. I remember rigging like an organization who I thought was, when I typed in Google, I was like, who can I ask about this question? Because I was baffled. I, was, I just became Muslim. I was new Muslim. I was like, I don't really want to get into the get into the bowing, the bowing thing, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. And then um, from that, I was like, okay, cool. I started wrestling for a bit. And someone said to me, look, I remember watching, um, I think it was uh, a close friend of mine, Mohammed, he said to me, oh, no, man, what you need to do. Referee Mohammed, yeah? Oh, I know him, yeah. So he said to me, no, man, you've got to start jiu-jitsu. I'm like, no, man, wrestling's the way, wrestling's the way. He said, all right, cool. He said, watch Mohammed Lawal versus Fejal in strike force. So I was watching, obviously, jiu-jitsu black belt and a wrestler. And um, a jiu-jitsu fighter and a wrestler. And I think Fejal beat him. So I was like, okay, cool. Maybe the jiu-jitsu thing can run. It's got a bit of wrestling, it's, it can run. I went to my first jiu-jitsu class and I started jiu-jitsu from there. So that's how I started. You just asked me how I started. Yeah, yeah. That's how I started. So um, watching people do jiu-jitsu, I was still watching people that was elite, as applying an elite, uh, applying a sport in, at an elite level. So, they, so it might not be that like, I wasn't watching a jiu-jitsu match. It's like, okay, cool. This is the art that he specializes in or this is the art that he's graded in and he's using it. He's managed to Keep him in the fight. So I'll do that. That was the point I was making. I don't feel like Jiu Jitsu is probably a bad example, but I feel like people don't really get into combat sports to make money. There's a lot 
of many other easier ways to make money than mm. getting punched in the face or your arm <laughs> twisted thanks. and stuff. So thanks, thanks. because you think about you think about the the elite, um, for, for example, in any sport, as long as big as boxing it is, and the millions that people have made, like Tyson made like thirty mil at one point in, in his career, like, but you could be a top ten fighter in boxing and not make any money at all. Sorry, let me just come back to what you just said. This is why what. This is my we're agreeing on the same point. People don't get into combat sport to make money. Yeah? Yeah. They get in for the love of it. Correct. So you're telling me everybody on the Jake Paul card had a love for the combat sport before the chance of making money came. And so, if if they didn't, <clears throat> then my point is is they're going to be encouraging people that were not interested in the sport before there was money to get involved in that money element of the sport. That's that's the point I'm making. So you imagine you see a guy that's never boxed like I never boxed before and gets told, okay, cool, I've rapped for however many years, I haven't made a bag. I'm going to stop rapping now. I'm going to go and have two boxing matches and make a couple of P's from it. Who, what am I going to do? Am I going to go and rap or am I going to go and make money? So the kid that's sitting down in his house saying, okay, I don't have to have an interest in boxing to make 10 grand after having one boxing match. Why not do it? Why not do it? Do you see I what I mean? I want to get punched in the face, man. I'll be real. Of half the kids that are outside are getting punched. It's, it's not a good thing, but they're getting that punch. You know, getting a punch in your face, they're weighing it up and saying ten mil, however much money. That's what I'm trying to say to you. The off-putting thing with boxing is, and it, or, or with any sport is, there isn't money in it, so you have to be willing to do it for the love. And when you get to the level where you can make money, your ability to be able to defend yourself and manage yourself, although the danger increases, will increase at the same time. Yeah, that that whole level has been skipped out. A man is telling you, bruv, you got to just do eight rounds. You got to do eight rounds mm. and you're going to be 10 mil up. You can ask a man, would you eat excrement for, for 10 mil, for, for half a mil? So, uh, there's people in the world that will do it. Yeah. A man will get tumped in his mouth for 10 mil, bro. You know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, people will get punched in their mouth for, for two mil, or, um, whatever the, the, the purse is. But my thing is, is that, that's why I said it's not encouraging people to get involved in the sport. So you, if you're saying that you wouldn't get involved in the sport for money. And that show is all about money and how much money people are making and who's eating, pe eating and making making dough. Then my point is, it's not. you're saying the same thing. It's not. Help I don't think it's helping the sport on the whole. It might be able to help an individual to make money. It might give an individual. But I don't think we can say, okay, cool. Because more people are watching that, they're going to get into boxing. Why? Like, to even to watch it, why? So because you watched two people fight it, Right, you're going to start watching boxing. You've already established that some of the best boxers are not even facing each other. Yeah. Same thing with jiu-jitsu. You can watch two lower belts fight, yeah, and have a really, really exciting match, and then you can watch two black belts fight, and it's not the same excitement. So watching uh, Yusik fight Chizora might not be as exciting as watching Jake Paul or somebody else fight someone like that. So you're going to, you're, 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 you're rude awakening of excitement of why you're watching it for that thing. You're probably not going to get that anyway. So you're gonna gonna start watching a bunch of uh, uh, the elite level. It's the nuances. You you're gonna want to have an interest in the sport to be able to see the nuances. I think I think you were saying that earlier on. We we're talking about jujitsu. We're talking about San Hagen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you were saying, oh, you appreciated it because you understand it, but to the naked eye, it might not have been something that a lot of people would have appreciated. Do you see what I mean? Correct. So I don't. So watching. Two evenly matched influences or two evenly matched people box is brilliant. It's good. You can see the art of it. But watching a mismatch or watching a mismatch where the rules don't allow the person who's better to do certain things. Do you know what I mean? Like, no knockout clause. Yeah, that's mad. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? It's, you, like, what, you're, mad, what, it's a false, you're getting a false impression of a sport that you'll get a reality when you watch it. And you still, and it's not like this is a one off. You're going to get a chance to go and watch back to watch the one that you was watching before or go and watch, watch, watch the other one. The other one next. I don't know if it's if it's if it's if it's a if it's a great thing for the sport. I think it's great for certain individuals. Yeah. Making money, but I don't know if it's a great thing for the sport. You know, you've changed my opinion. I agree with you. You reckon? Yeah, mm. mum. Yeah. Like, for real, it's a good point. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna play God's advocate, <laughs> and I'm gonna say Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor. He has the skill, though. He has. Right, cool. He has skill. But I'm talking about the element of what Lucas alluded to before, right? Talking a lot of raw crash, so on and so forth. I know he's a good fighter, 100%, 100%, 100 definitely a good fighter, but just in the element of 
hyping up the sport, getting eyes, as you said before, on on the sport. Same kind of thing with what you were saying before. Because I know a lot of people back in <clears throat> twenty thirteen weren't really watching MMA. Twenty sixteen. Yeah, Conor McGregor's like fighting. I want to see him fight, and I want to see what's happened with with my guy. Because but where was he fighting? What, what do you mean? Where UFC. was Conor fighting? You see, amongst the elite fighters. So you're yeah. being drawn directly to the doorway of the building that we're trying to invite you into, whereas you're not getting drawn into the door of the building we're trying to invite you into in relation to boxing. You're getting drawn into influencer boxing or boxing. There is are a difference. The, the but, then, but then they do have like, you know, on the, I know that's on the card, they have, they've had, uh, not, I can't say the elite, oh, I can't really say elite, but they had professional boxing. boxers on, on, okay. on their thing. Okay. Which I understand. And maybe when you put two professional boxers matched up against each other, we can say that's an exception to the rule. If you've got a pro boxer, you've, you've had Mayweather on a card fighting someone that, is he allowed to knock them out? Have you been allowed to knock But them? is that made to be an exhibition match though? So yeah. that, isn't it, it's an exhibition though? Yep. Right. So, in other words. So, yeah, but, but what we're saying is, is that that exhibition cannot be driving you to watch a boxer that no longer boxes. Maybe if it doesn't box. Oh, bro, but that's be real. That's not for, for bo- it's boxing, but that's for, um, how I see it is, that's for people like myself who had to see, who still appreciate Maybe to see him do his thing. So I would, it's I would, not I would. putting new seats into watching boxing, it's fulfilling a yeah. dream of someone who's already into it. That's yeah. Fine. I'm talking, we're talking about filling new seats. Yeah. So I'm not saying that I might be wrong. Statistically, it might be really, really wrong. It's just yeah. my opinion. Yeah. yeah. But my thing is, is that, like you said, you're going into the, the Conor McGregor door. He's in that door. Yeah. So it's one thing for someone who's who's bringing, what Conor McGregor did was potentially bought trash talking at a high level into a high level of MMA. Shell Sonnen. I think he done it better than McGregor. Okay. I'll be real. Shell Sonnen might have done it better than McGregor. But Chelsea was not undisputed. So what I'm saying, if we're talking about, obviously everyone in the UFC is elite. What do you mean he wasn't undisputed? He's undefeated, never lost a round. <laughs> the best fighter. Maybe. <laughs> According to Chell. <laughs> that's, his, that's his most, his best. Oh my that. days. But even if we go before Chell, yeah, and we look, we had Tito, we had Shamrock running in his mouth. But when it falls short of eliteness, it gets corny. Yeah, true. I'm not saying they weren't elite at their time, but okay, Shamrock and, and wait, you don't think Chell was elite? Hmm? You don't think Chell was elite? Who? Chell Zanon. You don't think he was elite? He was up there. He was yeah. up there. I won't say he's elite, but, but he was but up there. Elite, like to make something. So when you okay. say elite, by the way, I want to let's get the definition right, all right? Because mm-hmm. this this is so I'm a bit confused. Yeah. But when I, when I think about elite, I'm thinking like top five fighter in the world. That's elites. Yeah. Or top ten. What in each division, or do you do top five fighters and ten more fighters in the world? Well, that's yeah. a bit convoluted to be honest with you. So that's my point. So, so I'm saying, so maybe, I'm saying, I, maybe I'm saying elite is the top one in every division. Your elite might be the top, top five, five in yeah. that division. Because you can't, because without yeah. a partner, you can't last, so right? So if we add elite, we'll do that FIFA, elite, world-class, pro, yeah? Like, in the UFC, that's a uh, pro slash world-class level, in it? Like, it's professional fighters, world-class level. I yeah. would say everyone in the UFC, even the unranked people, they're all elite fighters. But amongst mm. UFC fighters, there's elite of the elite, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. So fairly of a better term, I don't think... With with <clears throat> Connor, Connor went into the category of the top. He's a his he's history. He's made history. He's in history, and he went in as one of the top fighters of the UFC at least of that time. Mm-hmm. So he had the most financial draw. He had two belts. There were so many different things that you can look at. How it was manufactured, I'm not disputing that, but that's a fact. So maybe they rewarded him for running his mouth by giving him the fights that would make him to justify his eliteness. But they saw that the, the requirement to level up the eliteness with the running the mouth. Yeah, I don't know whose dream it was, Connors or theirs first, but it married up to some degree. Yeah? To the point where people were talking about, oh, who can beat him, who cannot beat him, ABC, different G. Mm. If we're talking about, um, and this isn't my preference, this isn't who I prefer as a person or a fighter, we're talking about Jose Aldo being one of the elites in, in MMA, in his prime, getting knocked out in five <coughs> seconds. So even if we doubted it before that moment, that moment, even if you didn't want it to happen, you was like this. Yeah, I was so sad. He's, de- he's in it now, isn't he? He's up there. He's done his thing. Yeah, you can't I mean? argue with that. You can't argue with that. Yes, you, you can. Argue with it. Yes, you hmm? can. Why? I'm going to be a B again, because I've got here. You can argue it because people were, were, were saying, I'm, I'm saying this, I'm saying people were saying lucky punch. There's no such thing as a lucky punch. At yes, that level. Punch, there is such thing as a lucky punch. There is. On Jose Aldo. Bro, 
It's, it's MMA. Remember, he's he, remember he's in a certain a class of, of enough to get a so-called lucky punch. I'm again, I'm just paying because I've mm -hmm. go ahead. I've I've heard that luck is when preparation meets skill. Mm -hmm. Boom. And I've seen videos of Conor McGregor drilling that exact punch backstage. Before licking him in his moments. Back. So, mm -hmm. with that being said, it's not lucky. You've prepared for mm -hmm. an outcome yeah. and executed your and plan. I'll give you this example, yeah. The only time, even more so than the Habib fight, where Conor looks like he didn't have a plan for what was happening was against Diaz. Yes. Even with Poirier, when Poirier hit him with the, with the elbow, hit his foot. That was a very unfortunate moment for how devastating the injury was. I'm not saying Poirier didn't try to block it. I mean, like, I don't Poirier said, I'm going to break your ankle. About the first one. My elbow. Yeah? But, but about the first fight. Hmm? What about the first fight. With who? Poirier. McGregor beat him. Yeah. TKO, wasn't it? No, no they fought three times. Or three. So the first fight, the second fight was... Um, knocked him out. Okay, he knocked him out. This was after the, so, so the Nate Diaz fight, yeah, mm. was the first time he didn't look like he had an answer to what was going on in the cage. Mm. And what I mean by that is that he didn't prepare for what was happening effectively. Even against Habib, if you look at the first exchange in the grappling, yeah, he did what he was supposed to do. So Habib had to go to a crackdown on his leg. Yeah, so you know what I mean by crackdown, yeah? So single leg head outside, mm. and you've gone higher up so you're cracking down in this fight. Mm. So even though in theory he can take your back, he can't get your back because the angle's wrong. Mm. Yeah. So so and and that's when you go for that, you're you acknowledge the threat of going behind you and you deal with it. So what McGregor did was actually good wrestling for Habib to have to go right cool crack down. I'm just gonna high seat you and throw you. I've now had to, to modify and, and kind of shuffle off. So McGregor did that. So it looks like he prepared relatively adequately for the majority of his fights in the UFC. So the reason I'm saying that is because when we're talking about luck, that's why I wouldn't imply that the punch that he hit with was, with with mm. um with with um Aldo was luck. Because if we look at the criteria for what Connor's done in his career, he's been very prepared mm. to be able to deal with the different specific style of each fight that he's fought. Mm. The times he's flopped, okay, we've said one, two, two, two. Even the Diaz rematch, he fixed what would make him lose. Mm. I'm not saying he did a he had a wonderful fight. He was like, all right, cool. I've got a plan for this now. The way I'm going to stick with my boxing mm. in a certain way. It's only, it's only, even the poor year knockout, he wasn't losing that fight. He wasn't. He wasn't losing that fight. So I'm talking about preparation. So it's more, I'd be more inclined to say the punch that Poirier hit him with, based upon planning for a match, was luckier than the punch that he hit Aldo with. Much more. Aldo, didn't, Aldo still has not done anything to Conor McGregor. So what do you think happened to him in that, in that particular moment why he got exposed to him getting knocked out? So by, by Poirier? Poirier, yeah. Underestimation. Underestimation. So I feel like he what he did before he had his way so well with and his ego. Yeah. Cool. So it's not... I'm, I'm, a poor, I'm a much more of a Poirier fan than ATT, bro. That's, okay. Like, oh, I'm, I'm putting there. So again, another one. Yeah. Just another one. Right. Pena yeah. versus Nunes. What do you mean? Number one. What do you mean? Because you were saying, you were saying there's no thing as, 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 as luck, right? Or mm. at the elite level. If I remember correctly, um, it was a Rene Kitrok, wasn't it? Uh, so with jujitsu, I always, this is something I always say to people when I try and get them to, to do jujitsu. Yeah. Like with boxing, you can land a, a lucky punch. <clears throat> but with jujitsu, to execute a submission, there's so many steps that have to happen successfully before that. If you get a submission, you but can't before, argue no, it's but luck. Before he hit the ground, what happened before that? Before, before that point? Like, and Nunes. Yeah. She was beating her to the punch. Destroying her. But remember, Nunes was destroying her in the first round. What happened in between rounds? Okay. Second? What happened in between rounds? Because in the first round, yep. I watched that fight and I was like, Nunes, I was like, Penn's going to get that dealt with. Timing. You, when you yeah. assess timing in the striking, especially striking, yeah. you assess someone's rhythm and timing. If you watch... Nate Diaz versus Donald Cerrone. When Donald Cerrone yeah. fights, he bobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah? yeah. One of my favorite fights, he bobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what Nate kept doing was hitting him between the movements. So he's like a metronome. One, two, one, two, one, two. What is we, you, you use a metronome for touch the metronome and stop it. And it will have to reset. So what happened was Cerrone kept having to reset. Timing. What did McGregor, McGregor say about how he managed to knock out um, Aldo? Hmm. Timing. Timing. Timing's a very, very, key. yeah, do you see what I mean? So timing is a very, very, very integral part of striking, especially, yeah? 
Ooh, in any sport, yeah, but but striking is very easy to see. Once you yeah. once somebody's made you privy to it, you can see it. Like you can see rhythm. Like watching someone's jujitsu rhythm is a little bit complicated. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's more patterns of behavior. Yeah. yeah. But, but rhythm wise, yeah, it's mm. that you can kind of feel a jujitsu rhythm, but it's hard to see. Yeah. yeah Whereas you can see a striking rhythm. You can see, you can see what's happening, the body movements, mm. the um telegraphing before something someone goes for something. Because remember, you're throwing a strike out. Jujitsu is connected. So it's because it's a connected art. You're not seeing something. Mm. It's not. It's not in transit. So you don't get to see it in transit. It's not destination, motion. Does it make yeah, sense? Yeah, it's connected yeah. and then manipulation. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Well, what you said about what you said about uh, Poirier and McGregor mm. is how I feel feel about Pena and Nunes. Yeah. It's the same thing, like yeah, yeah, like yeah. Oh, un, like underestimation of what I'm just gonna walk yeah. through my girl. One hundred percent. And the uh, same thing with Cyborg and Nunes. Oh yeah. So it's just, it, so. Uh, delusions of grandeur are a very big deal. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like thinking you're better than you are, thinking you're greater yeah. than you are. I'm not saying that as an, on a personal attack on any of them, yeah. but that's the most extreme version of having an having an ego or being being nonchalant mm-hmm. about who your opponent is. You you're clearly do, if if you think you are better than you are, even in that for one instance, you make mistakes. Happened to me before. Happened Left to me. my foot in something and then then my foot's getting twisted up. Yeah. And, oh, clearly I thought. My belt meant I don't, my foot can't get taken away. No, my foot can break like everybody else's foot. So I need to be careful. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. if you want to honor your rank or your status, honor it with training and concentrating. Don't think because I've got it, I don't have to do. Think I've got it. So it's, I owe it to what I have. I owe it as part of my journey to continue doing what I've been doing and do it better. Mm. So I'm trying to say to you, uh, I think. Okay, a black belt feels like that a lot. And I tell you the reason why a black belt feels like that a lot, yeah? Every other belt that you get in jiu-jitsu, you get rewarded for ability. After black belt, you get awarded for time. So if I don't put my work in, I'll just be the most the, the worst one-stripe black belt. Because I'll get the stripe. I say, how many years? Because I, I always want to know this. I'm not even... How many I'm years even, for... I'm not even thinking about it, bro. How many know. years for a coral belt? A coral, 70, oh, isn't it? Coral belt. I thought it was three years for each... Uh, Degree on your black belt until third degree, and then it's five years. It's five years. So hey, you said seventeen years. Seventy seven zero, I think. What's a coral? I believe so. No, that, no, no way. It's a long. Was white, and, white, 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 and red. Yeah. It's essentially a tenth degree black belt, is it not? Or is it one after that? I don't think it's that. Can't be that long because he'd be seventy. Years, I've I think, never. I think. I think. I think it might be the one after the black and red. <clears throat> no, it's not seventy. Do I know why it's not seventy? Because Christian D'Souza is a coral belt. He's not 70 years old. Um, Roger Gracie's dad, I think he's 64 and he's got one. Yeah, so he can't be 70 then. Maybe it's, it's, it's several it's decades. A, it's a solid number, isn't it? It's, it's like a huge a, number. It's like if you give me that amount of money in, in pounds, I can have a good evening. Do you know what I mean? It's one of them. Like <laughs> a, we can go Nando's yeah, and do a couple of other things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's one of them. Like, So I get you. It, it is a lot. But I mean, like, so if I don't honour my my rank, mm. my my rank will outrank my ability. For sure. Do you see what I mean mm. by that? Whereas every other belt, if you want to coast, you can coast, but you will never have to go up. Does that make sense? You won't be given. So the way to honor your, <coughs> what you've been given is to work. It's to put the work in and go and do it. Now that's the problem with delusions of grandeur. In, in myself, mm. anybody, or somebody thinking that they're better than they are, you get caught up in the moment and think that moment's going to last forever. It's not going to last forever because everybody's still chasing. Everyone's still moving. I mean, if you stop moving, it doesn't stop everyone else from moving. They don't, we don't halt. It's not halt. Everybody wait for me to, to, to put my hands in the air and be, be happy for what I got. No, it doesn't work that way. You know what I'm saying? That happens. Man. I love that, man. It's true. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. There is so much more to talk about. Uh, I'm not going to lie. So many different directions I'm going to. But obviously, I think there's a lot of time today already, um, um, as is. But actually, down to you guys, man. What should we talk about next time? Comment below, man. That's what I want to know. What you guys want to talk about? Obviously, we'll talk we'll about UFC and so on and so forth. But I want to hear. I'm sure we want to hear from you guys at home um, as as to what it is. Remember to share, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. We appreciate it. We're trying to grow the channel. We're trying to grow everything, guys. That that we're doing here. We've got so much to to give to you guys. So please, 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 like, subscribe. Thank you to Devante and Luke as always. Hopefully, um, who should be back? Mikel should be back um, um, the next time with the, with the man and I'll be out. <laughs> no, you need to big up Jamaica as well, man. Okay. Yes, because I'm recording today on the 6th of August, so we all have to be Jamaican um, roots here. So happy Independence Day to um, 
um, all the record boys and girls at home. Um, so we got uh, the Jamaican football team as well. Uh, the women yeah. are doing very well at the moment. Yeah, undefeated, not conceded any goals, and they've just knocked out Brazil, which is huge. So it sounds like you see, bro. Need a GoFundMe to help them get <clears throat> to the World Cup. Trust. Get me. So the support is needed. Yeah. It's time to start respecting women's football, man, in general. So mm -hmm. rather than signing up and subscribing to certain people's people's YouTube channels that are doing madnesses, mm -hmm. take your time and effort and sign up and support the job. What are you talking about, bro? Who are you talking about? Bro? Hmm? Who are you talking about? Huh? Who? Who? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally unrelated, like his argument with Jim, but we're all related. This is related. It's unrelated, isn't it? Like, yeah. <laughs> as well but once again guys until next time peace lovely thank you guys man appreciate it man no, you guys, good, wicked man you guys are wonderful man wonderful discussion man was DJing from the table you know how